Not only did I get to interview Josh Alexander in the United States, we also competed. Why? Well, because the Fightful Champion, Joe Pearl, mandated that I compete against Josh Alexander with the stipulation of my choosing and have to win in order to get a Fightful Championship shot in Canada. Well, see how that unfolds on this video, but you know what? Whether I'm in the States, whether I'm in Canada, I've got NordVPN.com to protect me, and I can be in either one virtually thanks to NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Change your virtual location with just one click. Block online trackers, block hackers, block annoying pop-up ads, block malware on all your devices. I'm going to be taking my phone. I'm going to be taking my, my two-in-one, my laptop, tablet. It'll work on both of those no matter where I'm headed and where I'm traveling. Helps me out a lot on that unsecured Wi-Fi when I am jetting around the, the country or even Canada, right? They got three great tiers for you. The tier, uh, the basic tier has just the VPN. One up, you get a pass. One up from that, you get a locker on top of that. And you get access geo-restricted content and services that are not available where you live to unlock all of that geo-blocked content. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. It's time for an interview and a scooter race, my friends. What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp. Fightful here in Louisville, Kentucky, where Impact Wrestling will be running this weekend. By the time you all see this, we got the world champ. We got Josh Alexander. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm a little nervous. It is a fantastic rib <laughs> that I was about to hit you up and say, hey, I'm going to be in Toronto next week. Let's do an interview. And then Impact PR says, hey, uh, Josh Alexander is going to be an hour from where you live. And I'm like, hell, okay. <laughs> here we are in Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah, why not both though? Why not? I mean, why if, not if both? If you make it to Toronto, why yeah. not? Yeah, if so I make it, it's gonna be a little hairy traveling up there. Right I'm now, a so. little nervous, <laughs> honestly. So, how has that been for you traveling? And are you still in Canada right now? Yeah, I live outside of Toronto, about an hour outside. But I avoid all that nonsense, and I drive to Buffalo. To That's fly okay. Place. So I've had a lot of people tell me that they they were like, "That's just easier. Don't have to deal with customs, anything like that." Yeah, it's definitely a hack. Like. <laughs> There's so many people that I've talked to that are in the wrestling business that kind of like have moved or relocated just because, you know, flying out of Canada is insane, international travel since the pandemic. But, uh, yeah, I've just, you know, done the drive. I saw you mention on social media last year that maybe you were considering relocating to the States. Like any, any headway on that? It's always a consideration, especially for, uh, you know, how much I'm not at my home now. <laughs> I would love to live somewhere close to like uh, a dedicated hub for Delta so I get direct flights and stuff like that because these connections from Buffalo are killing me, but uh, you know, it's always on the table. I never know. I moved to Lexington and I was like, oh, cool. I'll be near three airports, Cincinnati, Louisville, Lexington. Everything just goes through Cincinnati. Nothing's going through Louisville or Lexington anymore. It's a real bummer. But uh, in the past year, I had mentioned this to Jordan earlier, travel's obviously picked up. How has that been for you? Uh, it's been good. It's been an adjustment. You know, I, I got really used to being at home the majority yeah. of the time <laughs> and I really enjoyed it. Like I, I would drive down to Nashville once every six weeks for that year or so we were in the studios and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm happy to be on the road. I'm happy to be in front of different crowds and getting in different markets and stuff like that, because not only for like impact wrestling, you know, doing better and stuff with that, but like, you know, for me to get to experience different crowds and grow my own brand is cool. How far is that drive? 12 and change. Woo. Ooh, no thanks. No thanks. Uh, you see, I, I've I'd take the monorail. Is there a monorail? <laughs> I've come up in the wrestling business, so like I used to drive to Chicago on a Friday night and drive back to make it to work in the morning. You know what I mean? So I would read Jericho's book, and he'd be like, yeah, we had to drive across a frozen lake to wrestle in front of 12 people. I've done that loop, too. The, Have you? The Northern Hell Tours, yes, I've done that as well. <laughs> What was what were the fewest people that you wrestled in front of on those? Uh, it was always at least fifty. Some That's of them were solid. Like three hundred and fifty people. D it depends on the size of the community and the uh, yeah the native reserves and stuff like that. But it's always like loaded with kids and they're always nuts because there's nothing to see there. So like the second you have an event, like they're they're hitting the ring and stuff like that. It's it's a different experience. But if you got fifty and it's an indie show, especially up there where it, the population is more sparse, sparse, it's. That's not bad at all. No, you're talking like max a thousand people on most of these okay. reservations. So yeah, 
So you, you've had a, a pretty categorical shift in your Impact career over the, the last couple of years. Ethan Page left Impact. That left you without a partner. It's worked out really well for, for both of you. How was that adjustment for you? And uh, like when, when that happened, like what did you see for yourself in the immediate future? Uh, I will say that I didn't see anything for myself in the immediate future because – it's not that I'm a pessimist. It's just that, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know if it's like self-conscious is the word or anything. Like, I've been in wrestling long enough to know that you never get your hopes up for anything because, you'll, you know, you'll be let down the majority of the time. So, uh, but luckily, you know, uh, both myself and Ethan Page were very decorated singles competitors on the independents throughout, you know, all over North America. So I had a lot of experience wrestling really good wrestlers at that time in a singles capacity. So when I got the opportunity, I could make the best of it. And that's all I've been doing is trying to be consistent and delivering every time since then. So. Now, around the time that you, you spent a little bit of time away from Impact, your, your name was being brought up on AEW TV in, in reference to him as well, like them saying, we signed you to get to Josh Alexander. Did you have a heads up on that? Did you know that was coming? And what was your reaction? No, no. I looked at my phone at like 8 o'clock on a Wednesday night, and it was blowing up from everybody. Yeah. Be like, did you know this was going to happen? And I was like, I had no idea. And like, it was kind of like... I think serendipitous is the word that like everything was happening with impact at the yes. time. So it was just like, it was planting these weird seeds that just, you know, built the buzz machine a little bit more, but uh, no heads up. It's cool to hear if it's true, you know, awesome. But like, yeah. I mean, that's nothing but positive buzz right there because they're sitting there and they're saying, this guy is very valuable. We would like to have him. However, impact was able to secure you, re-sign you. What was that like for you? Because, I mean, the free agent period now is a whole lot different than it used to be. Yeah, the, I think the whole business changed kind of midway through the pandemic for all of that stuff, you know, with the influx of AEW and stuff like that. Just like there's a lot of jobs out there, but then Ring of Honor shutting down and stuff. Like it's always like this ever-changing thing with being a free agent. It's stressful, especially for someone like me who it took 14 years to get signed anywhere and to get any real notoriety. But, uh, like, I always wanted to be with Impact Wrestling. I knew that I had unfinished business here. Like, even though I didn't think anything was possible out of my singles career, I had people like Jordan Grace and you know Santana of LAX telling me I was going to be a world champion since the moment I got here. So, you know, I, I do owe Santana steak dinner though. He bet do you he, the night before he left Impact, we were hanging out and uh, like just to say goodbye. And uh, he said, "I bet you a steak dinner that you're going to be world champion before Ooh. your first contract's up." And I was like, "No, wait, take that bet all day long." And, I still owe him steak dinner. So. Technically, it did happen. Yeah. It did happen. So how, what is your reaction when you find out putting this title on you? And not just that. I mean, it's one thing to have the moment, but I thought it was really good in how it built to another moment. So mm -hmm. you get multiple of those. And we, we've seen that in the past where you sort of parlay that thing that somebody deserves so much into an even bigger crowning thing. Uh, how was that for you when, when you find out that that's what's going down? I mean, initially, it's excitement, and it, it's all this stuff like it's unbelievable. You never thought this was going to happen, and, and you can't wait. And then you realize all the pressure and all the responsibility that comes with it, and that weighs on you a little bit more. So it, it was just a – it's like a weird transition period of being like, I got to – if I was working hard before, I got to work even harder now, and I got I to gotta be more dependable and more consistent now. So, like, now as champion since Rebellion, like, the amount of pressure I feel – is insane not only to deliver in the ring in the main events after these stack shows following like the likes of mike bailey and diana oh, yeah. perazzo and all these people that are going to tear it up all the time but like i'm representing the company and i'm also representing this locker room that's full of people i love and respect so you know it's something i take very seriously now you're in an even more high pressure situation how many watermelons do you think you can crush with your legs <laughs> in seven seconds i can crush more watermelons than jordan grace with my legs in seven seconds it's Dude, gonna my happen. My quads are way bigger than yours. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Let's have. Let, let, I'll bring her over illusion. here on camera. Let, let's get the wide shot of this. We're gonna have a quad off. I don't think it's fair because I have hands on it, but you can already tell that mine are bigger. I don't, Excuse me. It's an optical illusion. Big, look, he's flexing them too. Yeah, you so hers she. are. She's basically wearing compression pants though. Like those are meant to keep the quads in, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, see your, your Hitman shirt. You ever met Bret Hart? I have met Bret Hart. I was actually on a show with him a few weeks ago. So. Nice. I interviewed him, and I was like, you know what? It's going to be awesome. I'm going to get the most positive Bret Hart interview ever. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let's talk about Al Dandy. I love that promo. And he's like, yeah, I loved it too. I would have loved working with him instead of Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 
Amazing. Yeah. I was like, tell me about the best sharpshooters. He goes, it's a lot easier for me to tell you the worst sharpshooters. I was like, I love it. What was your experience with Bret Hart like? Uh, I actually, I haven't spoken to him a lot other than, like, you know, paying my respects. He was like, him. love your work, would love to see you instead of Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> no, the first time I met him, I was going out, or it was early on in my career, and I just went up to him and was like, hey, man, you're one of my heroes, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And he goes, oh, thank you. And he goes, uh, what was your favorite match of mine? And I was just like, uh, you and Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestling me at 13. He's like, yeah, I get that one a lot. And he goes, and he just like, what, what, was, what was your favorite part of it? And I just kept going and kept going. And he kept asking me questions. And he was just like, oh, why'd you like that? And, this, and we talked about, like, the psychology of it and stuff like that, which was really cool to me. That He just took, you know, 20 minutes out of his day to just shoot the breeze, which is sweet. He's a fascinating guy. Uh, did you grow up in Toronto, around Toronto? Yeah. What is it about that area that you, th- you think that cultivated such, like, such a boom in talent? Because, I mean, like, listen, there, there are big cities all over – the world, but there are a couple places like Cleveland and Toronto, especially, mm-hmm. that seem to develop talent like at an advanced rate. For me specifically, uh, it's a two part. When I started wrestling, we used to have a wrestling commission in Ontario, and yeah. it shut down. Thank so God. So my first year in wrestling, I had over a hundred shows, which That's is amazing. Yeah, it's nearly unheard of for yeah. independent guys. I've I've, I've av- averaged a hundred shows a year pretty much my entire career. That's amazing. Which is insane. Other than like nine months off for neck injuries and yeah. stuff like that. But uh, it's that. And I think it's so hard for Canadian wrestlers to get noticed, like, on, like, a, a global scale. Even though we have IWTV and Fight and all these things for independent promotions to host their stuff around the world, it still doesn't get as many eyes as the American indie scene. Sure. So once you do break through, once you do get noticed, once you do get the opportunities like myself and, you know, Ethan Page and Uno and Dose and all these people that break through that ceiling, Mike Bailey now, uh, you're ready for every opportunity you get, and that's why you can, you know, as they say, hit home runs or whatever. SummerSlam weekend, I was just blown away with the number of promotions, even locally, because, of course, there were, like, WXW and people that came in to capitalize, but there were a lot of, like, Greek town running shows and, and all that stuff. Like, I, I loved the, the the sort of the ability that they had to just be like, okay, well, we're running. Actually, I saw I saw her in Toronto. She came and saw us in Toronto. You're not paying it. She she uh, had a giant rubber head of me. It's amazing. It's amazing. Haven't I seen that head? Probably. Yeah, you've been there too. Yeah, okay. You've been That's to that studio okay. too. There you go. So, um, like, I thought that was a fever dream for a second. <laughs> I wish it was. I wish. I wish my boss was less obsessed with my face. That w- that would be fantastic. But, like, what what do you think could even uh, sort of cultivate talent more in a place like that? That has plenty of it already is is or do you just kind of keep it as is Uh, i'm not trying to pat myself on the back here but like i I think anybody like myself who does go on and make a name for themselves somewhere else being able to come back and give back to that scene is very important it's something i've tried to do a lot because when i started it was people like eric young and bobby Roode and all these other people that had just left the independent scene and they didn't really come back it was like once every like five years they'd come back for maybe an independent show me i'm trying to get back like at least once every, you know, three months for something so that, you know, I can try to get more eyes on the scene at least so, like, the next generation of people get noticed a little bit easier. I noticed one name you left out, and I'm going to assume it's malicious. Why didn't you mention RJ City as one of the greatest technical wrestlers you know, okay. in the world? Listen here, okay? When RJ City started, he was in a tag team called uh, the Wild Stallions. He came out with, like, multicolored gear and tassels and all this stuff. He was like a throwback hair bands gimmick with a guy yeah. named Joey Valentine. And he's going to be so upset I'm talking about this, which is partially why I'm doing it. But the first time I wrestled him in, like, 2007, he came up to me and said, can we just chain wrestle, like, World of Sport the entire time? What? <laughs> Because I know, because uh, Josh, I know you know what World of Sport is. I know you like chain wrestling. I know you like technical wrestling. Can we just do that? And I go, why? He's like, I love doing that. That's all I enjoy doing. So that's what we did. And look at what RJ City has become. Look, I was surprised <laughs> you didn't say. I want to do it like Hack and Schmidt, <laughs> like Hack and Schmidt. Yeah, uh, I saw a tweet that Jordan Grace put out that said that no wrestlers from the two thousands. <laughs> No wrestlers from the 2000s could hang with RJ City yeah. in the ring. And I said, yeah, I think, I think you're right. Ask, ask John about it. I'm going to ask Josh about John because he's asking me. What, oh, what about John? I asked you about John. I like John Tenta. 
I, John Tenta, <laughs> listen, that's when haircuts were men. He was 26. <laughs> 26 in the WWF with that skullet. Yeah. Why don't, why don't you do a skullet? Me? Because my wife would divorce me, and I'm very happily married. Listen. That's listen. why I don't have a mustache as well. If I could grow up to be like John Tenta, I would. I mean, that guy looked 40 as hell <laughs> when he was there, when he was squashing that snake. He was 27 then. It, it blows my mind. It's amazing. A, a good Canadian boy as well. Mm-hmm. My gosh. Why wouldn't you take after him? But yes, John Grisham, in my opinion, is... Probably one of the best wrestlers. Oh yeah, with. I I uh, used to watch his. I think it was Octopus Academy videos, mm-hmm. and then I would run downstairs, grab the camera moment, and be like, "Let me try this. Let me try this." <laughs> Loved it. Loved it. The slow nod from behind exactly. the camera. <laughs> the slow nod. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. As you made your return to Impact Wrestling, you had uh, quite the entrance. Not not to the ring, mm-hmm. to the building, Josh. Yes. Was it this hotel? Uh, it was not this hotel. Okay. You rode a bird scooter mm-hmm. to the venue. Please tell me. How did this come together? Uh, <laughs> so I was supposed to be hidden, obviously. I was a surprise. I wasn't supposed to show up to the show for call time. I was yeah. supposed to show up after it started. So I'm just sitting in my hotel room, and I'm like, oh, it's you know 8.15. I might as well head over. It's 15 minutes away. I went to call my Uber, and they were just like – they were all booked, and it just kept – searching and searching and I was standing outside the hotel I look to my right and I see a bird scooter and I didn't have my gear on me this day because I'm just doing a run in and I was just like eh why not and I just cancelled it I was just like it'd be cool to like say I did this yeah and I rode a bird scooter like four and a half miles to the venue four and a half I thought it was like one. Oh no no it was it was a trip like the bird scooter for the last like quarter mile was dead so I had to push it like a regular scooter oh, to no. get it to the venue but yeah I think it might still be at the venue to be honest listen <laughs> We've got two right outside this door. Mm-hmm. I want to race bird scooters with Josh Alexander. All right. I will dust you in a bird scooter race, and then I will crush watermelons and put Jordan Grace to shame. It, it is the Josh Alexander Olympics <laughs> right here. Right here in Louisville, Kentucky. You all can see Impact Wrestling here this weekend. Josh Alexander, I want to thank you so much for the time. Thank you for having me. Till next time, we're out. A few moments later. Dead man walking. You've done it now. You've gone and made a big mistake. And I can't allow you to think you can just walk away. So turn around and face the piper. You're gonna pay. Yes, now it's gonna be your judgment day. I be Josh scooters around here sponsor us we don't care about lime just bird impact wrestling world champion right here Louisville Kentucky